Recognizing Oak Bay Gordon Head. Uh, thank you, Honourable uh, Speaker. That took me a little bit by surprise, as it was so succinct, and the previous speaker, and uh, and she was so timely in her in her words that she was speaking in, I think, support, cave, um, cage, uh, caveated support to this bill. But I'm not quite sure. I was I was indeed listening in. Um, it gives me great pleasure to ride and stand in very strong. Let me be very clear very strong, unequivocal support of Bill 23, Landowner Transparency Act, and second This is something that is long overdue in British Columbia, and I am absolutely delighted that the government is stepping up to create the important registry required to ensure that partnerships, trusts, and corporations that own property in British Columbia have beneficial ownership registered in such a registry. You know, this legislation will require owners of such corporations and partnerships and trusts to file a transparency declaration when there is a transfer of legal title or, of property or a change in beneficial ownership. Pre-existing beneficial owners will also be required to file a declaration. It doesn't apply to individual owners. Uh, the ownership information of individuals is already publicly available through the Land Title Office, as we know, as you and I have to do that whenever we buy a property. But therein lies the problem. And this is an issue, Honourable Speaker, this is an issue that I've been raising in this legislature not long after I got elected in 2013, within the context of what was going on when I asked question after question after question to the then BC Liberal government about what they were going to do to close the so-called bear trust loophole, which is continuing to this day to be used to avoid paying property transfer tax and to avoid the disclosure of who is buying or is not buying property in British Columbia. This is the first step there. This is a requirement that beneficial ownership now be declared in the registry. Let me give you an example about why that's, that's important. Let's suppose I want to speculate in the Victoria or Vancouver real estate market, and I assign somebody to go and buy a property and to buy that property and put it in a trust. I'm going to put it in a trust, and there may be a corporation that owns that trust. And the beneficial owners of that corporation may be some people who were, who were there initially to, to buy that, that property and put, develop the corporation. Those individuals have no need to disclose the owners of the shares of the corporation that owns the trust. The trust is on title. The trust is all that's on title. No matter how many times those shares in that corporation changes, no, how many, how many times the not only beneficial but majority ownership of that corporation changes? There is no change of the registered owner of the land title office. It is the trust, the Blair Trust. And so we had examples of properties being flipped, uh, typically high-end properties, being flipped from owner to owner to owner, not through the sale and change of land title, but through the change of the transfer of the shares of the corporate corporations that owned the trust that own the land title, all the time avoiding property transfer tax because you only pay property transfer tax on transfer of title, not on transfer of beneficial ownership, which is a, an area that I hope government at some point in the future will move towards closing. But I understand the rationale that they're bringing forward now, is they want to gather the data first to see how the scale of the problem is in order to deal with the problem rather than um, uh, going straight to, uh, to uh, deal with the problem. Now, I, I have some th sympathy from that argument. It's, it's, it's taken some time to get here, but we are here, and I'm absolutely delighted that we are here. You know, the registry that will be there will be publicly searchable, but with some inform information only accessible uh, by government and the law enforcement for reasons that were articulated by the minister in her opening remarks. The bill also allows individuals to apply for, uh, to omit information if their health or, as the minister alluded to, uh, safety uh, is at risk from public disclosure. You might, uh, might imagine, for example, the issue of someone fleeing domestic violence, where it's important to keep, or someone in a witness protection program. It would be kind of odd to uh, have the beneficial ownership of a property of someone in witness protection to be actually in their original name. So there's reasons that we have that. You know, coming back to the background for this article, the Confidence and Supply Agreement, the BC NDP and the BC Greens signed back in 2017, uh, states as follows. We will collectively focus on shared uh, values to make housing more affordable by increasing supply of affordable housing and take action to deal with the speculation and fraud that is driving up prices. 
The BC Green Caucus has been calling for this for I don't know how long. Uh, to, we, we know uh, we've been calling on government to eliminate the ability of buyers to hide their identities through shell companies, numbered companies, and trusts. You know, we've been calling on them to improve transparency in the land title registry, not only this government, but previous government before that, and to, to, to improve the land title and corporate registry by requiring the disclosure of beneficial ownership. Disclosure is critical to actually dealing with any issues that may be out there. And we also have been, for quite some time, pleading with government to make existing and new data more regularly and freely accessible to researchers and the public. And we hope that as the registry is create, created and was promised in Budget 2018, that this will be the case. You know, this registry is without a doubt, Honourable Speaker, a significant step forward for transparency that ends hidden ownership. As we know, hidden ownership is intricately tied into speculation, tax avoidance, and money laundering in our housing market. One of the issues raised by the Minister and prior to that by the member from Point Grey when in opposition was the notion of shadow flipping, the notion where I put in a contract to purchase a property, but it's me or my assignee purchases that property. So I might, uh, with the member from Vancouver, uh, sorry, West Vancouver, uh, um, West Vancouver Capilano, I may buy his property. And I may buy, put an offer on his property with uh, Andrew Weaver, I'm a, the member from MLA Oak Bay Gordon Head, or a signee. And I might, this, uh, the, the member from Vancouver, or West Vancouver Capital might say, that's a great offer, I want it. But my or a signee clause is such that I could actually start assigning this contract to whoever I want, who can reassign it to whoever they want, who can reassign it to whoever they want, and they can jack up the price as we go along. Now, steps have been taken. I, I, I think it was the previous government, or was it this government? I can't remember. That, that this place becomes a blur, Honourable Speaker, after a while. Um, but certainly we have now have legislation that requires that any profits realized after the shadow flipping goes on are actually, they go back to the original uh, seller of the property. So the member from West Vancouver Capilano would not lose out if I were shadow flipping. But nevertheless, the transfer of the properties in between those stages would not be required even today. To, to, in, to be uh, disclosed. This registry is critical, all stages of the process, transparency. You know, the use of shell companies, as I mentioned, of, of uh, the uh, trust and proxy ownership structures have obscured who has owned property in this province, undermining efforts at gathering and analyzing uh, and allowing for an analysis of large-scale tax evasion and the data that used to support this. Transparency International, a uh, report by them, found that uh, governments can't identify the own owners. Now get this, government cannot identify the owners of almost half, almost half of Metro Vancouver's most expensive homes. Government, whether it be Metro Vancouver or City of Vancouver or the province or the federal government, no government knows who more than half of the properties, the high-end properties in Vancouver. We don't know who owns them. What a, what a recipe for, for um, abuse. It's just unbelievable this has been allowed to go on for so, so long. It's absolutely unacceptable. This, this bill, Honourable Speaker, will close that. We'll ensure that transparency is there. We know, we know that wise, wise, um, uh, wise accountants who, who know full well about the existence of the Bear Trust loophole have been advising clients to avoid paying property transfer tax um, by buying their property in a trust. If I, for example, Honourable Speaker, were to buy a property in a trust, any house that I wanted to live in, I buy it in a trust instead of me. As soon as I buy it in the trust, the very first time that happens, you will buy, pay property transfer tax. But every single time that that house is traded, for there on in, you will never pay any property transfer tax as you transfer the shares of the corporation or, uh, tr uh, that owns a trust from one to another. This is one of the reasons why the higher-end homes, so many of them, have been put into trusts. Because when they flip, there is no property transfer tax, and the property transfer tax can be expensive. There's also means and ways of hiding, hiding foreign ownership behind, uh, and some of that was indeed closed again by the previous government after much pestering. Buyers, um, we know uh, that some of the money laundering 
has taken advantage of this too in Vancouver, Metro Vancouver. That while we still await Peter German's report, we still await at least another chapter, we've got one chapter, there's got to be more coming. It's clear and we continue to push, and I will be do do doing so for the, in the weeks ahead, for a public inquiry. We need a full-scale public inquiry into money laundering in this province. It is inexcusable that we have had as much as $5 billion laundered through Vancouver's real estate market since 2012, distorting housing prices, particularly in the high-end markets. We know, I forget how many thousand homes are empty in the member's riding, member of West Vancouver, uh, uh, Capilano, met with the council and mayor of West Vancouver, Capilano, who were at, all, at, at odds, not knowing what to do to actually go after the owners of these vacant homes that they simply are leaving there, not paying the social cost that has been historically developing by these homes being left vacant, and distorting a market that would otherwise not be where it is if it weren't for some of the laundering and uh, nefarious activities going on. We know, for example, just in 2016, just in 2016, over a billion dollars of Victoria's, of Vancouver's property, transfer, uh, faction, tr property transactions had links to Chinese organized crime. Over a billion dollars in one year alone had links to Chinese organized crime. That's not counting any Russian organized crime, any Canadian organized crime, any American organized crime. It's just one. It's rampant in Vancouver, and we've, got a, we've sadly got a reputation internationally for being the home to the so-called Vancouver model of money laundering. Not a, not, a, not a nice thing to be known for. The president of the Law Society of BC stated that this groundbreaking move by the BC government will increase the transparency of land ownership in BC and make it more difficult to use arrangements for tax evasion, fraud and money laundering. British Columbians will benefit from a fairer and more transparent real estate market. Those are pretty powerful words of support from the President of the Law Society of British Columbia. I think that's a strong independent endorsement of this legislation. Transparency International has a, a, applauded the establish, establishment of this registry. Another pretty strong endorsement from an international organization. And, the, and a former director of FinTrack has said that the province is now leading the country with this legislation. And I can tell you, Honourable Speaker, if there's one thing I want British Columbia to be, it is a leader. We're seeing finally, finally, leadership in transparency in the real estate sector in our province, and for that, the Minister deserves a great deal of credit. And I thank her, and I thank this government for bringing this forward. You know, if ever there was a moment that we have second-guessed our decision in 2017, as to whether or not we support this side or that side in terms of a minority government. Let me tell you that legislation like this makes us not question for a second that we did the right thing. Government, the Liberals opposite, had many, many years to deal with this, but they ignored it. I can't remember how many times I stood up in this legislature and posed questions to the then, to the then finance minister asking him when he would step, take steps to deal with the transparency on beneficial ownership and close the bear trust loophole that was being used to avoid paying property transfer tax and also being used to launder money. And the public record of this is available on my blog site. You can see it there going back years. And the answers I was getting were platitude. Because to be honest, the members opposite simply had no idea. They had been in government too long. They'd lost ability to determine, they'd lost ability as to determine what the issues were, and there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that this issue is um, before us. Thank you to the member from Prince George Vailmont for calling for relevance. Thank you. And the reason why I called it to your colleague, because every time anybody on this side, on, on our caucus, stands up, you have the audacity to stand up and call relevance, yet you're not willing to accept others calling relevance to the other side. So it's part of the hypocrisy that we see. And I enjoy the conversation, and I will make this relevant, Honourable Speaker, before you must tell me to make this relevant. Coming back to the Bear Trust loophole, 
As I noted, I've, I've been calling on government for years to deal with this, and frankly, this is a step in the right direction. Hopefully, government um, will move forward to closing this. I know that the market had discounted this, both the real estate market and the accounting market. They had both already discounted that the government was going to close the bear trust loophole. They didn't, but now they're collecting data, and that probably will lead it up to, to move forward. We also, uh, ex uh, at looking, at, looking at this, we also need to expand this progressive approach to transparency, also to the corporate registry. Right now, the corporate registry is not searchable by director name, and, and hopefully um, this hampers, you know, as it's hampering transparency and accountability, hopefully we'll be able to see this transparency that we're seeing here with respect to, to land ownership move into the corporate registry as well. The Attorney General has called this issue a deliberate or grossly negligent decision that limits transparency, a benefit to firms and individuals who wish to evade accountability. I urge government as well to move beyond this and to change the corporate registry to fix this problem in line with the spirit of the legislation before us today. So in conclusion, Honourable Speaker, this legislation is an important step forward for opening up hidden ownership in real estate in British Columbia. And it's timely. I'm very pleased the government has done it. And it's just a shame that we've got to go to the position we're in after so many years of neglect in this sector. We need to go further and crack down on tax avoidance using the ownership structures that the data will be collected, and I'm looking forward to government stepping in to close that bear trust loophole, which, have, which many use to avoid paying property tax. I look forward to seeing information in the registry, and we'll continue to push for action on this file and get to the, get to the root, root of the housing crisis. With that, Honourable Speaker, I, I do note the time, and I uh, would like to move adjournment of the de debate and reserve my right to continue at the next sitting of the House of, after the debate. Thank you.